Hi, this is a quick beginner tutorial that answers a question from a new user called Never Die on the EV Blogger forum. And I actually see this one quite a lot. When they get an, like a, one of these modern digital oscilloscopes for the first time, they read the data sheet. Oh, it's capable of going down of one millivolt per division. One division on the screen equals one millivolt. That's its lowest setting. But when they, uh, they might take the thing out of the box or they're playing around with it, and they might find that, well, they can't get that setting. It only goes down to 10 millivolts per division. What's going on? Now, if we take a look at the Rigol DS1054Z here, one of the most popular beginner oscilloscopes, you'll notice that it's got a vertical attenuation setting that goes anywhere from one millivolts per division all the way up to 10 volts per division. But sometimes what can happen, you either get the oscilloscope out of the box or you've been playing around with it, and you might see that you can't actually get that value. Now, it it can actually go to different readings. It can go up to 100 volts like this, but more importantly, what the questioner asked is that it, he could only go down to 10 millivolts per division. And it doesn't matter whether he's got his probe set to times one or times 10, it makes no difference. He can't get down to one millivolt per division that he wanted. He wanted to measure low level signals and he can't do it. So what's the problem here? Well, to an experienced oscilloscope user, it's really easy and obvious, but to be a beginner, not really so much. Let's have a look. If we actually go into our channel one uh, vertical menu here, then you'll notice that the probe setting is at times 10, and that is the problem. You just go in here, hit that, and you go to times one, because if you're using a times one probe, that's what you need to hit. And bingo, it drops from 10 millivolts per division down to the spec of one millivolt per division. That's all it is. So for this volts per division setting here on your oscilloscope, to be correct, you must ensure that your probe setting here actually matches what you switch on here. If you have it on times one, you use times one. If you go and then switch that to times 10, you have to go in here and switch it to times 10. Otherwise, your vertical reading here is not accurate at all. You're gonna be an order of magnitude out. Now, the important thing to remember here and what confuses a lot of people is that your the input to your oscilloscope, all those ranges, those different selectable vertical ranges from one millivolt per division to 10 volts per division, they do not change. They are fixed in the hardware. They've got physical amplifiers and attenuators in there to do that. When you actually go in here and change this probe setting, all it's doing is it's a software function that just changes the multiplier down here. So if we put it to times one, it's one millivolt. If we put it to times 10, it's like that. If you've got a times 100 probe, like a real high voltage probe, or if you've got a times 1000 probe, for example, you can go in here and the minimum you can go down to is one volt per division. And the highest you can go up to is an insane 10 kilovolts per division. Of course, this oscilloscope is not capable of 10 uh, kilovolts per division. You need one of those real proper high-end professional high voltage pros, but it allows you to just to set that manually. So it allows you to use any type of custom probe at all, including amplifiers as well. If like in the case of uh, a typical switchable times one times 10 like this, times one, of course, the signal just goes straight through times 10 is actually a misnomer. It's actually a divide by 10 probe. It's got a nine mega resistor in here, one mega input impedance. It actually divides your, attenuates your signal by a factor of 10. So the 10 times that it actually shows on the probe here, um, that's like, a, think of that as a reminder to set it to 10 times here on your probe uh, setting on your menu. But if you had an external times 10 amplifier, for example, you would set it to 0.1 uh, a probe like that. So you've actually got an, a, an external amplifier that's amplifying your signal and you'll get the correct setting down here. It's all to do with software, nothing to do with the hardware range of the input here at all. And that's one of the limitations of cheap oscilloscopes like this Rigol DS1054Z. It doesn't have what's called auto probe detection interface around here. So th the software in this oscilloscope does not know that you've changed that setting, that you've added in a, a divide by 10 divider. So it has no way of knowing that you've flicked that switch. So you have to set this manually. And it has this weird error message that says parameter limited here. And that's just a little uh, quirk of the Rigol goal oscilloscope by the way if you wanted to know that it just means that you've reached the bottom limit of your setting here so that's another question he asks it's nothing to uh, worry about at all i don't like the way rigol do that
higher end and more expensive oscilloscopes like this Keysight 3000 X series will actually have what's called an auto probe interface around the connector down here. Now this will automatically detect the particular type of probe you got and automatically change that probe setting that times one times ten or whatever particular type of probe you use. It'll auto detect it. So if you've got a matching probe for the oscilloscope here you'll notice that it's got this little tiny pin in there which when we plug it into here will actually make contact with that gold ring around the outside there and this actually contains a resistor in it and it will actually be able to measure that you've uh, hooked on a particular different type of probe and, and different uh, probes can have uh, different uh, mechanisms some probes even are intelligent and they can use like an I squared uh, C type thing and things like that uh, a digital identification method but watch this okay it's currently set for a probe of one to one okay this is channel one so it thinks there's because there's no probe attached it knows that it's going to be or it assumes it's going to be a times one probe but if we plug in this matching probe watch this change up here instantly bingo look times 10 but of course you have to use the proper matching probe for this particular type of oscilloscope. If you try and use this Rigol oscilloscope probe it doesn't have that pin on there so if we actually go and plug that in Look, it just stays at a uh, one-to-one -one probe, a times-one probe, because it doesn't know that you've plugged in anything special. And if we get another advanced oscilloscope like this Tektronix 3000 series, you'll notice it also comes with a pretty fancy looking probe. This is a one gigahertz one. And once again, it's got that detection pin on there, plus the circle actually surrounding. Now, as I mentioned before, this Tektronix probe is actually one of these smart probes. It's actually uh, got a single pin communication system there, even though there's all these extra pins around here. These are supplying for external power for different types of probes but there's actually a uh, chip in there that contains the serial number and you can actually transfer the settings for this particular probe from one channel to the next channel so if we actually plug this in here you'll notice that we're one millivolts per division we plug it in this is a times 10 uh, probe of course it doesn't actually uh, tell you that on there but all professional uh, oscilloscope probes are times 10 only so I'll explain that in a minute now if we plug that in it go it knows that it's a times 10 probe so it goes up to 10 millivolts per division that's now our absolute minimum we can't go any lower than that but you'll notice that it's now got a serial number detected in here it knows its attenuation is times 10 and it actually tells you that here that you can actually store the compensation results for this particular probe and then it'll move it from channel to channel so you don't have to actually recompensate the probe every time you're moving your probes around. It's actually a terrific feature. Now although this is not guaranteed if we take our Keysight probe here it does have our detection pin and we actually plug this in will it actually change? Yes, it does. It changes to the 10 millivolt per division. So it knows you've plugged in a times 10 probe. So if we take our cheap ass Rigol probe, which doesn't have the times 10 um, tip on there, then we plug that in and we're still at one millivolts per division. So in that case, we have to actually uh, go into here, into our probe setup, and we have to set our attenuation uh, manually here with, uh, there we go, with the control knob, we have to go up there a little bit fiddly to times 10. And this isn't just a trap for young players either. Even experienced engineers can get caught out like this. If you're using these switchable times one, times ten probes, it's so easy when you're just handling these or moving them around on the bench to bump that uh, that switch on there. And and it's not really immediately visually obvious that it, that there's anything wrong there. And it doesn't matter what oscilloscope you use this on, uh, there is no way to actually detect that you've got times one or times 10 there unless you use a proper professional probe. But you'll notice that the professional probes never ever have this switchable times one times 10 on there. And there's a good reason for that. And click here if you haven't seen it, I've done a separate video on why these uh, probes, times one, times ten probes, particularly in the times one position, are actually quite poor unless you're using them to get the you know for really low level signals. Their actual their bandwidth and performance is quite poor in the times one position. So click here if you haven't seen that video. And the other thing the forum user asked about is why is there so much noise on the lowest one millivolt per division setting? Even if I disconnect the probes here, look. Yeah, look, it's pretty horrible like that. 
Once again, I've done a video on that, so click here if you haven't seen that and I explain why uh, it, this is the case noise floor on oscilloscopes and also uh, why digital oscilloscopes can actually appear noisier than old school analog ones as well. I've got two videos on that, so click here if you haven't seen them. I recommend it. So unless you're working on low level stuff, I don't recommend these switchable times one times 10 probes. They can uh, be a real pain in the butt and you can get easily caught out having the wrong scale factor here. Happens to professionals all the time. You just miss it. Ugh, annoying. Anyway, I hope you found that uh, useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps a lot. I think the thumbs in the other direction on YouTube. And if you want to discuss it, go on over to the EV blog forum. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.